Hello, everybody. I apologize. I had to change out of my tuxedo. It was just too hot. These lights are killing me. All right, so I had to get comfortable what we're going to talk about in this lecture and for the next uh, lectures in this entire course. All right, this lecture is going to consist of, because I need for you to understand how to work with the packet tracer. By the way, I will provide a link on this course to download the packet tracer 533. Okay, it's not a fake website, just don't click on the wrong link, like I did, all right? It's, uh, I think once you click on the link, it takes you to a page where it says you want to download it because it has it for Ubuntu and Fedora, and has it for Windows and Mac. No, not Mac, does it have it for Mac? I think so, all right? But you click on the one for Windows, and it takes you to another page. On the next page, the link is on top. Don't click the big download in green, which I did, obviously. I went for the biggest button there and I was downloading something else. All right, it's not that one. It's on top that says, you know, Packet Tracer 53 download. It may not, at the first time, it may not download. You click repair download, then click it again, and it'll work. So the, the, the link is good. I actually tried it and downloaded it to my PC and I installed the Packet Tracer 533 without a problem. So since this course, we're gonna be using the Packet Tracer pretty much all the time. I'm gonna show you how to work with the Packet Tracer so you don't have any issues connecting it and taking out the equipment or anything like that, okay? All right, so once you install the Packet Tracer, uh, you can get a little icon here. And again, it's just a default, just like any program. Once you run, next, next, yes, I agree, next, 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 and then boom. You want to run the Packet Tracer now? Yes, and it opens up. All right, so uh, oh, it's a double click, isn't it? All right, so we're going to go ahead and open up the Packet Tracer. And again, some of you may use the GNS3, and hey, listen, that's fine. GNS3 is a great simulator. The only thing is, you need the real iOS. And if you don't have a beefy computer, yeah, your computer is going to crash. Okay? When I say beefy, I mean, you know, i7 processor, quad core, 16 gigs of RAM. All right? You better have something like that. If you don't, if you have more, hey, gamers, all right, you know, go for it. You have no issues. But if you have a, you know, regular computer like, you know, everybody out there that may have 6 gigs of RAM, may have an i5, you're going to run into maybe a couple of issues. So be careful when you're doing the GNS3. Read the instructions for, what is it, idle PC, so you can make sure that it doesn't take up that much processing power, all right? If not, the packet tracer runs perfect. You're taking the CCNA. You ain't taking the CCMP. So this is good for the CCNA, all right? Now, once you open up the packet tracer, this is what you get. You have your menu bar on the top. You have certain tools here that you can use. This is your work area. We're never going to switch back and forth from this logical to physical. We're always going to stay in the logical view. You have other tools down here that we're going to use. Here is where your devices are at. And as you click each device, it's going to change right here for you to choose the device that you want. OK? Now, we'll get into this as well, because you got real time. See how it says real time right here? Let me move it a little bit more. Maybe I, I know I'm a big guy, and you may not see it. So that was meant to be funny. All right, real time right here. And then you have what's called simulation. This is great, because when we start talking about ARP, we're actually going to see it in action, okay, in the packet tracer. So that's pretty cool, all right? So we're going to go to real time. So now, when we start developing these labs, right, one of the first things what we want to do is go to options, go to preferences. Now, in preferences, one of the things I tell everybody, and the only reason that that's checked normally, that right there is unchecked. You want to make sure, at least for me, it makes it a lot easier. I want to go ahead and put a check mark there. So when I start connecting things, you can see the ports that you're connecting to. Like uh, when, we, when we connect the switch to a router, I normally pick the last fast Ethernet port on the switch, which is 24, and then I pick the F00 on the router. So you want to see that connection. When you make it, that it connected to the correct port. When we start assigning, oh, well, it's not in this course, but uh, <clears throat> when we do the VLAN course, okay, that you're going to need the packet tracer as well, you need to see the ports that you're plugging your PCs in. So like in the VLAN course that I just did, that encompasses all that, VLANs and intra-VLANs, we went ahead and you can, when we plug them in, or it was plugged in already actually, uh, you can see the ports that it's attached to. So you need to see the ports. So make sure that that is there. Now, with me, with me, let me make this a little bigger, okay? With me, since I am pretty much blind, okay, and I can't find my glasses, all right, so I get a new pair. 
You can go to the font and in the CLI, you see I have it to 14. Yep, I got no choice. I got to have it to 14. But you can make certain changes in here. And really those are the only two that I mess around with, okay? Which is over here in the interface and in the font tab. You can want to look at different things. You want to change the color, the background of when you're working inside the router of the PC. Go right ahead, it's right there. That's not a big deal. What I would like is, for me anyway, when we're working, make sure that your ports, you'll be able to see it. And again, that was in under options and preferences. Options and preferences. And really, that's it right there. Besides, if you want to do it the long way, you want to go file and you want to save your actual files, okay? Down here with these tools, again, you have the new, open, and save. And then the only other thing I use up here is to zoom in or zoom out. That's it, okay? That is it. Now, down here, our devices. We have routers. Let me get my little tool here. We have routers, switches, and what is this here? Hubs. These are wireless devices, and that's pretty cool. You can actually have a, a Linksys wireless router there. Come on now. There you go. It took a while to come up. And it looks just like a Linksys wireless router. All right, so when we do the wireless class, we'll actually be configuring uh, wireless. Not that difficult, but we'll do the security and talk about it and all that. But very nice to have. And if you want to get rid of it, you see how it's selected? Now it's not selected. If you select it, you can come here to this X. And are you sure you want to delete it? Yes. That's another thing with the packet tracer. Even if you saved your file, if you try to close it, it's going to tell you, hey, do you want to save your file? You're like, oh my God, I didn't save it. Yes, you did. It just makes sure that you don't want to lose it. So you don't have to worry about it. If you know you saved it already, just click no. If you didn't save it, click yes. It's going to ask you for the name again. All right? So wireless devices, this right here are cables. Now, let me, you know what? Let me maximize it real quick. All right? These cables here, if you pick this, which is the lightning bolt, it's going to pick, you see this little icon right here? It's going to go ahead and you know that you picked a cable, but that's not a cable. That right there will automatically choose the cable for you. Don't do it. Why? Because I want you to know what cable goes to what. So let's make an example. Let's go ahead and get a router. Let's get the 1841 router and let's put it up there. Let's get a computer down here. Are your, well, let's get a switch first. Let's get a switch. Let's get the 2960 switch. Why do I pick the 2060 switch? Because that's the one you're being tested on. You're not being tested on the 3560, which is a layer three switch. You're not, it's not gonna be tested on, all right? All right, so we don't really need to mess with that. All right, and then let's pick an end device. And here, oops, there are your end devices. Here we'll pick a generic computer, and we'll just put it on the screen. Now, let me tell you, you got IP phones, and I have a tremendous uh, voice lab. I may, I may. Uh, add to this lab much later, and I'll actually put my voice lab up there and show you how to create it. It's pretty cool. It's a little call center. It works really. Uh, it works very nice, and the phones flash. That is so funny. If you if you bring this up here, and you go into it, if you go to the GUI, yes, I know. All right, you got to put in this adapter right here to power it on. Here it is, right here. All right, go to the GUI. Now it's powered on. <laughs> All right, if you want to make a call, really, what is it? You click here. See, I forgot now how to do this. I'm sorry. Whoop. All right, I had to show you because this, this is pretty cool. It's pretty funny. Uh, well, I know you can take this headset out and you, the actual light flashes, which is pretty cool. But I may do that and put it out there for you just so you can have a little bonus there, okay? Now, you have three different devices. What cables do you use? Dissimilar devices you use straight through cables, all right? You have the standards, remember the standards, okay? You have the A standard, the B standard. A is for, you know, they're both the same, make it simple, if they're both the same, A on both sides, 568A on both sides, it's a straight through. 568B on both sides, it's a straight through. If you have an A and a B, it's a crossover, okay? But if you were to pick the lightning bolt, like I was talking about before, really? You click on the computer, right? And you can see the cable follows you, right? It follows you everywhere. And then you click on the switch, now it's connected. It shows the cable for you. And it shows the port for you as well. And it will always choose the first available port. But we don't want that. We don't want that. 
Okay, where's that X? There you go. We want to choose our own ports. So this blue cable, that's your console cable. I want to go ahead and console. And see, now it gives me a choice. Well, where do you want to plug this cable into? RS-232. I want to console into the router. So I'm going to go ahead and console in right there. And how does that work? Well, click on the PC, go to the desktop, terminal. You got to make sure that your bits per second, 9600. If it's anything else other than 9600, you're going to see Chinese. You're not going to understand anything. It's going to be little heart symbols and crazy stuff, all right? Because it doesn't understand the bits per second rate. And your flow control has to be none. Anything other than that, it's not going to work. Now, let me backtrack on that. There's certain registry settings that you can do to actually manipulate the bits per second. Why would you do that? I have no clue, all right? I've never had to mess with that. The only time we change the registry settings is we want to bypass the NVRAM, the startup configuration. That's it, okay? Or we want to forcefully, forcefully go into ROM monitor mode, okay? So when you go into terminal, just make sure that says 9600 and none on the bottom, you click OK. And now you're inside the router. I have no IP configuration on my computer or on my router, but now I'm in my router because you can console in. So that's one of the advantages of counseling in. And if you have a blank router, you're going to have to do that. But now let's say we want to connect the, the PC to a switch. Type a cable, straight through. 568A on both sides. That's the standard we use here. OK? So we click on the computer again. The only cable that's available, which is the fast ethernet, there's your cable. Click on the PC, I mean on the switch. Now you see you have all these available to you. OK? You can plug it in the gigabit. That's fine. All right, but I pick the first available port, which is Fast Ethernet 1, and you can see now the port that you're plugged into. Okay? All right, you plugged into Fast Ethernet 1. Now, I want to plug in the switch to the router. Dissimilar devices. What do I use? Again, a straight through. Bring that in here. Click on there. Now, from switch to router, I like to use the last Fast Ethernet port, like I said in the previous lecture. What happened? Oh, I think I have it already on 24. Let's find out. Let's come over here. And I'll pick the first available port, which is F00. So now this is a little, you're going to have to play around with this. You see, you can't see really what port it is. OK, you may have to play around right there. And that's port 24. You can see there is port 24. OK. I like to use the last available port on the switch that's going to the router. Also, look at the red light versus the green lights. All right, this just means you have that it's on, that, this, that there is connectivity between there. Here, the router's port are administratively off by default. So that's why you're going to always see a red dot there. This is not going to turn on until you turn on that port on the router. All right, but let's say now that we have another switch. So let's pick a switch. OK, let's pick another 2960. And let's put it over here. Now we got similar devices. How do we connect two switches together? We need a crossover cable. So we go to our lightning bolt to choose our cables. And we're going to go ahead and get the dash one, the dotted one. That is a crossover. Switch to switch. Let's pick port 23. And I hope I got it. And then we'll pick port uh, 23 as well. Well, let's pick port 22 just so we can make the difference. OK? Now we have a crossover cable, which is what you should have for similar devices. And when it means similar, I'm talking about the pinouts. OK? Now, the packet tracer is very forgiving. You could have put a straight through cable there, and it still would have worked. Real world, there's a lot. Right now, the switches, pretty much any inter-networking device is smart. You plug in a straight through, it's going to understand. If it's plugged into another similar device, it will change the pinouts internally, and it will know that it will turn into a crossover. It will do it internally. but Again, this is a entry level certification. You need to know your cables. Okay? So crossover. All right, and we have it there from the switch. And you can continue to plug in whatever you're gonna plug in. But that's how you play with these cables. Now, other cables that we're gonna mess with are the serial cables. And we normally are gonna use that, we're only gonna use that when we go ahead and connect router to router. Well, Let's see if that works. Let's bring another 1841 router. So we go back over here. 
and we pick another 1841 router and we pop it up on the screen. Let's try and connect the serial cable. Which one do we pick? There's one with a little clock on it and one without a clock. The one with the clock, that is your DCE, data communications equipment. The one without the clock, data terminating equipment. And as we all know, or will know later on in the course, that all routers are DTE by default. If you're connecting two routers like this, like in a crossover fashion, you're going to need a type of serial cable that on one end is a DCE and on the other end is a DTE. The DCE side of the cable is the one that provides the clocking all right, for the routers. So let's choose the DCE and let's go here and let's plug it in. Hey, I can't plug it into that. No, you cannot. What is it that you need? So in order to get rid of the cable, just go back and click on it again and it goes away. So we need to go inside the router and now you see that this router has slots. So we need to choose a slot. You can pick whatever slot. It doesn't really matter. As long as you know which one it is. We can pick either a WIC 1T and a WIC 2T and we'll talk about more when we start getting into the actual course as far as the cabling and what goes where. But let's just pick a, one, a WIC 1T for right now and you can drag it onto that slot right there and yes you must turn the router off first it is not hot swappable so turn your router off then drag it in no nope, didn't work all right let's pop it in there all right so now it's there then you can go ahead and turn your router back on okay and we do the same thing for the other side we come in here we take the wick 1t and we drag it, let's say it's drag it to this slot. Oh, look, I didn't turn it on. It's gonna yell at me. Like I yell at you guys, right? No, hey, get in there. Okay, let's turn the router back on. Now, we can go ahead and take our DCE. Now it's gonna ask me, hey, 0010. And we'll understand what these, these actual 010 mean. And believe me, there's routers that have serial 010 slash 0 dash 1. It, there's, when you get out there in the real world and you start working for major corporations and they have huge routers, you're going to see a much different serial interface than the ones you see for the CCNA. Okay? And then you bring it over here. See, it brings this big red line. You hit here and then serial 0, 0. So now you have two routers connected to each other versus the serial. My God, I thought the tuxedo was hot, but I guess it's just the lights. Let me go ahead and take this sweat off. I gotta be presentable for you guys. Gotta look good, all right? So now this is how you connect things in the packet tracer, not a big deal. And these are the cables that you use. Other things that are there, like you see this cloud, once we start doing the water area network stuff, like frame relay, PPP, all right? we're going to start using these clouds right here. This is how we're going to configure it. We're going to pick a cloud, go in there, and it, this one doesn't have any slots, and we're not going to put any because the other one, and I always can't remember which one it is, all right, already has the slots, and that's much easier. And if you go in there, you have already all your serial uh, interfaces and frame relay and, uh, that we're going to configure. For PVP, we won't use the cloud, but for frame relay, we will. Okay, so again, the packet tracer is very simple to use, okay, and to connect things, again, you pick the cable that you want. In a classroom environment, one of the most exciting things that we've done in a classroom environment with the uh, packet tracer, that it will be great if you can do it online, it will be something pretty interesting to see, all right, is that the packet tracer has the capability of connecting, let's say, me, the instructor's packet tracer to everybody else's packet tracer, and the whole classroom can be networked through the packet tracer. It's cool. And the one that allows you to do that is this multi-user cloud right here. And we create different peers, and you connect the cables to, let's say, the other switches or the other routers, and you make that connection. Pretty cool. Pretty cool feature. It makes everything a lot more interactive. So again, this is going to allow you to do a lot of things. So this is how you bring the devices out, and this down here is where you check to see what actually uh, device you're going to use. All right? So let's go ahead and delete all this. Let me bring this really small here. 
Okay, doesn't want to, oh, there you go. So that way I can select all of them, and then I can delete them. Okay, and say yes, and it's all gone. Now I want to show you, I'm going to open up a lab, and I'm going to say no, I don't want to save anything. I'm going to open up a lab that I have. Okay, let's see, let's see the, hmm, let's see this, if this one is working. All right. And this is just one of the, probably one of the basic first labs that you're going to work with, which is just three routers, okay? Very basic network, all right? But what I want to do is show you now this simulation mode, okay? And I hope it'll work. Maybe it'll time out, whatever. Let's say we want, we're talking about ARP, and we want to see the flow of the packet, right? So you go to simulation mode. All right, and you're going to choose now. I want to go ahead and let me see if I remember how to do this. Uh, yeah, I want to say I want to ping from here. Oh, no, I got to pick the PDU. Sorry. I got to pick the PDU and close that. Click that envelope, the closed envelope. I want to ping from here to here. And you see, look, you have two little envelopes. And what are they? You have the ICMP, which is ping, and you have the ARP. Because remember, the first time. And again, that's part of the routing process that we're going to learn about. It needs to know the MAC address of that particular gateway in order to send the packet up. So first is the ARP. So then all you do is you go auto capture and play and check it out. Woo, look at that. And there goes the ARP, right? It's going up. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit more so you can see it better. Okay. It's come back down. Say, hey, this is my MAC address, right? All right, and then the ping should go next, and you can see it there. And if it fails, because I don't remember, I mean, I see green lights, but I don't know if this is configured or not, because I, I didn't want to check it. <laughs> all right, uh, let's see if it goes all the way. But this is good, because you can see, oh, look, it's going to fail, I believe. Yep, did it. So it's not, something's wrong. Something's wrong in the configuration. I mean, this lab has been sitting there for a while, so I don't know. But the good thing is that in simulation mode, you can see where the problem is, and you can understand how the packet flows back and forth. So this is something that's great. And when you want to get rid of it, you go here, you select it, and you delete it. And it's gone. And then in order to work, you got to go back to real time. All right? So you can switch back and forth, so you can check and see the packet flow, and then go back to real time. So the packet tracer for your CCNA, really, it's all you need. It's not going to have any overhead on your router, on your PC. Okay? Very easy to work with the routers and switches that you need, okay? And it works quick, all right? So this is the tool that I'm gonna be using, and I am gonna make it available to you as a link, all right, on this particular lecture. So you just look for the link, click on it, and then just download it, okay? And we're gonna go through the rest of the lab using the packet tracer. Now, as far as, let me see if I'm forgetting anything, anything else? No, I think that's pretty much it. Just remember to save, 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 save. Not only save your configurations in your routers as we go, but also save your file. Okay? All right. That's it for this lecture. Next lecture, we start getting into the actual iOS and command line interface of the router. So I'll see you then.